Okay, so here we are at part two. You can't say I was going too slow that last part. I was, I was going fairly fast there. All right, so um, there's one last question before we go to E&M. That's how far will this thing go? How far is this thing going to go? You know, it won't go to infinity. It's slowing up. Okay, so that's the question. Now, it turns out that um, the area underneath the V versus T graph is, um, is displacement. And you might think that if I went out to infinity with this, I'd have to get infinity. Like, how, does, how do you not get infinity when you're adding up all those areas out to infinity? But remember, this is getting closer and closer to zero. So it is some finite value. And so um, the question is, how far will it go? Well, I'm going to start this, and when you know where I'm going with it, you pause and see if you can get the rest of it before you watch me do it, okay? So you watch me until you you know what you're, what you're how to do it, and then pause me. Okay, so here goes. If I know that this from the last video is, th that's the, this is the velocity, and I'm trying to get how far the, the furthest it's going to go is, then I'm going to just say that this is dx dt. That's equal to V naught E negative B over M times T. And I'm going to bring this DT on the other side. So DX is equal to V naught E to the negative B over M um, times T, DT. See how my T and my DT are on the same side? This is just a constant here. Okay, and then I'll integrate both sides from zero. Oops, it's, yeah, it starts at zero, we'll say, and goes to X. Now, this side is going to start at 0 time this t equals 0. This is x equals 0. This is t equals 0. And it's going to go to, um, let's say, an infinite time. We're going to wait an infinite time. You, I know it seems like it should go to infinity in an infinite time, but it's not. It's slowing up. Okay, so this side just becomes x minus 0, which is just x. And this side, if I take the, the antiderivative of this... Uh, maybe I'll pull the V naught outside, since it is a constant. And the antiderivative of this is going to be, um, let's see, negative M over B, E to the negative B over M times T. And I'm going from 0 to infinity. Let's see if that works. So if I take the derivative, sure enough, that's what I get. Yeah, so that works. Okay, so let me go ahead then and, and substitute in um, these, these. Now when I substitute in infinity, if I substitute an in infinity into here, uh, you know what I can do? I can pull the, these out too. So this is going to be negative m v naught over b. And then um, I'm going to say this is going to be when I put in infinity, doesn't the e function go to, a, this is a decaying function, so at infinity, this is zero, so it's going to be minus zero. And then a minus, and I put in zero, now you'd think this would go to zero, but at e to the zeroth power is one, so it's going to, it's just going to, um, going to be one. And so, um, this looks like the, the total distance it's going to go when I multiply those out. It's going to be m v naught over b. Apparently, that's a distance. So this is the furthest it's going to go, m v naught over b. All right. Let's uh, let's go on to E and M then. Okay, we'll start with a, a capacitor. I'm going to try and get this done in three videos. I'm thinking that we will. All right, so um, here's a capacitor. It's got a, a volt, uh, a capacitor in series with a, a resistor. So this is an RC circuit. There's a, there's a battery hooked up to it. It's four volts, two ohms, three farads. Okay, when I put the switch down at T equals zero, the instant I put it down, what will be the charge on the capacitor? It'll be zero coulombs. What would be the voltage across the resistor at T equals zero? Well, there's no voltage here, so it's all got to be here, 4 volts. What would be the voltage across the capacitor at T equals zero? Well, if there's no charge on it, there's no voltage. 
What is the resistance through the resistor at t equals zero? It's at its maximum. And so um, there's four volts across here at t equals zero because there's none across here and you gotta drop it somewhere. So four volts divided by two ohms is two amps. What's the power of the resistor at t equals zero? How much power is it using? That's what P stands for. Okay, it's I squared R and so it's two amps squared That'd be um, 4 amps squared times R, so times another 2, so it's 8 watts. Okay, um, way, way later on, we'll say an infinite time later on, but you know, infinity in these circuits is maybe like in 5 or 6 time constants. At that point, it's pretty much infinity to these time constants, or to these circuits. Okay, so at infinity, what is the charge on the capacitor? Okay, at infinity, the capacitor is totally charged up. There'll be no voltage across here, so all that voltage has to be across there. So I'm thinking it's it's C times V. That's the charge, C times V, and so that's going to be 12 um, coulombs. What will be the voltage across the resistor? It's going to be 0 volts. What about the voltage across the capacitor? Oh, it's going to be 4, four volts. And what about the um, current through the resistor? Oh, it stopped charging the capacitor long ago, so this is going to be zero amps. Okay. Moving right along. Hey, that last video is going to, it's not going to take 10 minutes. All right, on this next one, uh, same thing, I closed the switch. What's the time constant of the circuit? What is the time constant of the circuit equal? Okay, the time constant is R times C, so it's 2 ohms times 3 farads, R times C, and so that's going to be 6 seconds. Turns into seconds when you, when you look at the units. Hey, what will be the current one time constant after you close the switch? So one time constant after you close the switch, what will be the current? Okay, well, let's figure this out. The current is, um, the current's going to start out high and go low. It's going to drop like that. And so the current is, um, it's given by this equation, I naught e to the negative t over rc. So let's put in um, rc for t. That's one time constant afterwards. This goes to e to the negative one. So it will be I naught over e, because e to the negative 1 is like 1 over e. And so um, what did we say? The, the initial current was 2 amps. Yeah, so it's going to be 2 amps over e. That's what it is, 2 amps over e. How about two time constants? Two time constants, you'd make this um, 2 times rc, 2 times rc. And so that turns into, when you put a 2 there, that turns into just e to the negative 2 because the RCs cancel. So it's e to the negative 2 or I naught over e squared. So this would be 2 amps over e squared. E is about 3, so this is about 2 thirds of an amp. And this is about 2 ninths of an amp because e is about 3. Okay, what's the charge in the capacitor after one time constant? Okay, well, the charge on the capacitor is building. And so the charge in the capacitor is doing one of these. And so if that's building, then what we have to do is we have to um, use this equation. Q final minus Q final e to the negative t over rc. Okay, well, Q final was, um, what did we say it was before? It's it's 12 coulombs, so it's 12 coulombs minus 12 coulombs e to the negative, and I'll put in RC over RC. So that's like 12 coulombs minus 12 coulombs over E. That's what that is. That turns out to be about 0.67, or 0.63 rather, um, times... 12 coulombs. Okay, bye. See you in the next one.